In this tutorial, we'll look at how we can identify infrastructure at risk under different sea level rise flood scenarios. Infrastructure refers to the basic physical and organizational structures needed for a community, as well as the services and facilities necessary for its economy to function. This includes built structures related to transportation and communication, water and power, public health and safety in government buildings, private properties and structures, and sensitive public infrastructure like waste disposal, which we not only rely on, but may cause a contamination risk if flooded. So how do we identify infrastructure at risk? Within the context of our GIS analysis, we can define at risk in two ways infrastructure that intersects these flood polygons, or infrastructure that falls completely within flood polygons. The choice between these two methods depends on the degree of overlap and the nature of the infrastructure. We'll look at both methods. The data that we need for this analysis includes the flood areas, or polygons, and the infrastructure layers. I have three polygon feature classes of flood area, which I generated from a raster elevation dataset. This was reviewed in a previous tutorial. For this analysis, we'll start with readily available data layers from MassGIS. Each infrastructure layer should be clipped to the community in order to minimize processing time, as well as to allow you to calculate the percent of infrastructure within the community that would be affected under each flood scenario. In this tutorial, we're going to look at identifying three types of infrastructure at risk, roads, buildings, and land use. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll look only at infrastructure at risk under the worst case scenario, which is a flood height of 16 feet above mean sea level. So we're going to start with looking at our flood, flood data. So the flood 16 foot looks like this along the coastline. Activating the roads, we can already see that the roads in some cases fall directly within the flood area, so we want to identify those. One way to do this is to identify road segments that intersect the flood polygons. This can be done with the select by location. We want to select features from the roads that intersect the flood 16 foot polygon. And so we can see the roads highlighted in blue that intersect with those polygons. The problem is that it highlights the entire road segment. So even if only a portion of the road touches the polygon, the entire road segment is highlighted. So this is probably not what we want. A more appropriate way in this particular case is to use a geoprocessing method, specifically a clip, to identify only the portions of the roads that fall within the flood polygons. In this case, the input feature is a feature that we want to clip, and so we're going to identify the roads. The clip feature is a thing that defines the extent. In this case, it's going to be the 16-foot flood polygons. It's going to output to the geo database that I'm using, which I've already set up in the environment. But I want to make sure that I remember what this is. So I'm going to rename this roads 16 foot. And I'm doing this because I know I'm going to create at least three layers for roads. One for the 16 foot polygons and then for the other two um, flood scenarios. So I want to make sure I don't get them mixed up. Once I execute the clip, I'm going to end up with a separate layer that only identifies those roads that fall within the polygon. If I change the symbology for those roads, you can see those that fall within that flood layer. Okay? And notice that that long segment that was there previously is no longer there. Now that we have this, we can actually calculate the percentage of road length of the city that falls within the flood areas. So if I open up the attribute table for the road star that was just created, and I look to the far right, I'm going to get this column called shape length. This only appears in a geo database feature class, which automatically appends a shape length or shape area, depending on the geometry, to the attribute table. So then I know it's an updated, and so it gives me the, the real data, the real time data in the units of the coordinate system. So this is going to be in meters. So by going to the statistics, I can get the total amount of, or total length rather, of streets that fall within the flood area. So in this case, it's 5,800 meters, 5.8 kilometers. 
So I can calculate the percentage of the town's roads that fall within that by looking at the original length of all roads within the town, looking at the sum for all of the roads. So it's about 150,000 meters. So I can copy that and I can go into a calculator and let's say it's about roughly 5,800 that were in the flood area divided by the total roads. So I can see that about 3.8 percent or close to 4 percent of the length of roads in the city are at risk for flooding in the worst case scenario. The other way of communicating this is to give the total length of those roads in units that most people will understand. And so in this case, as I said before, the length of the roads that's communicated here is in the coordinate system units, which are meters. And while that's a useful unit, most people in the U.S. at least are more accustomed to thinking of roads in terms of miles. So if we wanted to add, if we wanted to know the length in miles, we could either take that sum and convert it to miles, or we could actually add a new column to have the length in miles. And in order to calculate the geometry, we right click on that new field, use Calculate Geometry. We want length, and the units that we we're interested in are miles. We hit OK. Now they're in miles. Now, if we get the sum in the statistics, we can see that the length of roads that fall within the flood area is about 3.6 miles of road. So we have something that's a little more easily communicated to the audience that we have. Okay, so we've identified roads.